Neither one of them actually wanted to lose again. King 10 for Ike. Raising from the small blind from the button. It's business time. Queen Jack for Maria. Monday's the night they visit Ike's mother. Tuesday is Maria's night to cook. But Wednesday, Wednesday's the night they make sweet. Maria calls. Let's have a flop. Top pair for Ike. And a gut shot straight draw for Maria. Ike's almost always betting this. A little tickle. Maria should not and will not fold. She calls. The turn card is an ace. Ike now a 93% favorite. Still not the best card for either player. Maria's checked for a second time. And it looks like Ike will bet again. Ike's guessing Maria would have re-raised him pre-flop with an ace. Is she gonna call with queen high and a gut shot? Time is ticking away. 10 seconds. 290. Ooh, and a check raise semi bluff from Maria. Not a call at all. But again, there aren't a lot of good hands Maria could be raising here that she wouldn't have re raised before the flop, right? Right now, Ike's thinking, do not lie to me, Paul Blart. Do not lie to me. Call. He calls. Ike is a huge Paul Blart Mall Cop fan. And we're going to the river. Pre-flop and flop, all pretty standard here. Then we get to the turn. Let's do this chronologically. Let's talk about Ike deciding to bet the turn before we talk about Maria deciding to raise it. Is this a good idea when the ace comes? The fear being that we're going to fold out a lot of the worst hands that we want action from. What do you think, Jonathan? Well, I think that is a really good reason to have some fear and a real, real legit concern. But there is another side to this, which is important, which is this. Ike is often, with his air, going to raise preflop, bet on this king high flop, and then bet this ace turn. So almost all of his unpaired hands are going to be betting this turn, I think. So if that's true, he needs to balance that with, with enough value so he can't just get destroyed by, by raises and by calls and things like that. And I don't think aces alone in his, in his range are enough. I think he actually has to bet some of his kings too. Otherwise, he just doesn't have enough value to make this work. And so he just feels obligated to bet this king 10, even though we're, he is going to fold out a bunch of a bunch of worse hands that he wouldn't really want to fold out. But maybe some nines call. It's relatively cheap and probably the king's call. That makes sense from a balanced perspective. But from a more practical perspective, it really comes down to if Maria is calling with some of those weaker hands or not. Yeah. Right? This is not a profitable bet if Maria is just going to fold all of her nines and deuces at this point. Right. This just can't be. Agree completely. And uh, he does also get to deny some equity with clubs and with any straight draws like she has, which has some value too. It really wouldn't have occurred to me to bet this. I'll say that. Like I would have just kind of auto checked this and called river bets by her or bet the river myself in most cases. So, um, but, but I think if, again, if he's going to have just lots and lots of air and he's up against a good player who's paying attention, having some balance here does make sense. And he does bet pretty small, so maybe he can get called by nines and even deuces a bit more frequently due to the size of his bet. It's possible. And maybe the size of the bet is also why Maria decides to raise. Because at this point, in our minds at least, we talked about it on the podcast, this is a binary decision for Maria. Her hand does not have enough equity to justify calling the turn. It's a raise or a fold at this point. She decides to go with raise. Maybe that's based on Ike sizing, kind of irking her into the raise, saying, mm -hmm. like, I can't let him get away for 90K. Just can't do it. And the fact that Ike probably has a ton of air, as you said before. Ike's probably taking all of his air and taking this line on this board because he has such an incredible range advantage as played so far. That means that this raise is probably going to get through quite a bit. The problem, though, Jonathan, is it's not a very good story, is it? What is she saying she has? I mean, it's a super rough story. She's saying she has one of two things, really. She's representing for value one of two things. The one that makes the most sense is ace-deuce. But that has to be, if she has ace-deuce, that means she didn't three-bet all-in pre-flop, 
when Ike had 27 blinds in this free roll spot, because they're they're free rolling this, if whoever wins this gets to fly to Malta and play a six-handed table for a million dollars, they're more likely to take shots in free roll spots, I think, like this anyway. Um, Ace Deuce, by the way, is a reasonable three bet all in spot, period, in that spot. Um, so I don't know if she has all her Ace Deuces anyway, but she probably has some. The only other thing she's repping for value here is a slow played flop hand, right? Like a slow played two pair hand. I guess King Nine. I don't really think she has sets here at all. Like I don't think she has Nine Nine or Deuce Deuce. King Deuce maybe once in a while. Like there's just not much here. Yeah, I agree. I think the story is just really bad. But because it's a bad story doesn't mean it's a bad play. This could be a good play just because Ike is going to take this line with all of his air, and that's combinatorially so huge, making this play successful so frequently to make it profitable, even though the story is bad. So while Ike has a king and he does call, which makes sense because of the story, right? Yeah. I think it still doesn't make it a bad play. It just happens to be that Ike has something this time, so it looks kind of bad. Yeah, I mean, I think Ike is basically... We we would assume as Maria, he's not going to fold any of his value hands on the turn. We're just trying to fold out the bluffs that are ultimately going to bluff us out on the river if we yeah. don't make this play ourselves, right? And we don't improve. And Ike's plan is probably something like calling basically every river that's not a club, right? That's most likely his plan. That seems like that has to be the plan if since he decides to put in another 200,000 here on the turn, and now he's put in about half his stack seems like you probably are stuck to this hand now unless unless a death card comes on the river. It's time for the Nitrogen Sports Poker ad, people. And that means we're going to talk about the greatest iterated value in poker. That's right. It's our monthly poker tournament. They guarantee a 1,000 buy-ins. And they never have more than like 200 people. And they cap it at 300. It's crazy value all the time, Grant. You got to go to our Twitter feed and click the link in our pinned tweet to get access to that tournament. You also get access to everything else that Nitrogen offers, which is a bounty of wonders. Sports betting, casino games, other poker, etc. Get on Nitrogen. Get you some poker. It's a jack. Too little, too late for Maria. But will it stop her from bluffing? All in. Nope. She shoves on Ike. Ike's got a really tough decision. This is for everything he's got. Maybe Maria was slow playing a monster. Maybe she got there with Queen 10. Remember, there is a seat in the final in Monaco on the line here. Ike's running out of time. He's playing a time bank chip. A cheeky smirk. Maybe he'll realize something's rotten in the state of Denmark, and I'm not just talking about Theo. Fifteen seconds. Ten. I call. Great call, Ike. Had a jack. And that, young children, is the story of how Ike Haxton doubled up. Now, should it have happened? That is the question. Let's talk about Maria's move here because she does pair on the river. She clearly doesn't think it's good enough. This is not a value shove, right? This is a bluff to try to fold out a king or an ace. Mostly she's targeting an ace, right? I mean, I would if I was Maria, I would assume Ike had a hand like ace seven-ish. And that uh, that's clearly what she's targeting. Um, she wouldn't think he has that many kings. Um, I think yeah. the king 10 is probably the bottom of his range anyway right now. Um, yeah, this is definitely not for value. She just knows that when he calls that 200K on the turn, a jack just isn't good enough. He's probably going to move in with his draws anyway on the turn. So like it isn't clubs. What could it be? It's got to be an ace or a king, usually an ace. Yeah, so that point that a jack is never good is a point in her favor to say the move-in is probably a good idea because we have to bluff to win. However, it might be the only point in the favor of making mm. this move. It's possible that this is really never getting through against Ike because, like you said, Ike really doesn't have draws in his range too frequently, if ever at this point, when he doesn't just jam the turn or fold with the weaker draws. So he's got a made hand of some, po of some type. Usually it's a king or an ace, usually an ace of those. Maria's repping ace-deuce. She should probably know that ace-deuce is her most likely hand. And if Ike's most likely hand is an ace, he blocks ace-deuce, meaning that Maria would only have six combos from Ike's perspective of ace-deuce. If we're trying to rep those six combos, I don't think that's enough against a guy like Ike. I think we have too much air. And Ike knows that his sizing could have induced this as well. I think Maria should have waved the white flag and not taken this shot. Do you agree? I completely agree. Uh, 
I know it sort of sucks. She's got all these chips. She's built this big pot. If this was a different scenario, if that isn't, if it's not an ace on the turn, I actually really like the check raise on the turn, and I really like the shove on the river. Even though I don't think it would have worked because Ike would have king ten and call with top pair based on the situation, that's fine. But I, but I like it. You know, I feel like that that's going to work a lot more. It's so hard for her to represent a monster here, plausibly that I just don't like the move. And when Ike is already put in half a stack, he's sort of cut down. He's likely calling with all his made hands. And he may not, maybe even has a few draws, but we're beating those draws anyway. Um, moving in is, you know, we're never going to get extra value from those draws. We're just, we'd be moving no, into prevent getting bluffed by them, I guess. That's a separate situation. I don't even know if he would try and bluff. Maybe he would. Uh, he might have a few clubs here. He might have a few draws, but not that many. And he's got so much value, which is not folding, it feels like. I don't like this move in at all. I mean, it makes sense that the players, especially top players who get involved in a lot of pots, it's built into a lot of their DNA to just never give up on a pot, right? Because overall, yeah. that's generally a profitable thing to do. But never underestimate the power of giving up in the right situation. And I think this is a situation where Maria should be giving up because, like we said, most of Ike's hands are made hands. As Maria, we should know that our story is bad. We should know that Ike is a poker genius and is aware that our story is bad as well. It's just not going to work frequently enough. I think this is hopeless. I think we're, we're launching 415K into the ether. I think it's a bad idea. That being said, Ike is at probably the bottom of his range here of made hands. True. Right? Unless he had jack Still, of clubs. So if Ike was using distribution, he would probably choose to fold. Yeah. But I think the story is bad enough that he weighed that more heavily and decided, you know what? It's not a club. I'm going to call. Maybe I could fold on clubs, but it's not a club. So I just have to call. And this is the thing. Like, So not only is Maria telling a bad story, which I'm sure she's aware of too, but the situation kind of demands that Ike take these high variant spots right now. So Ike really knows that he has to get a double up at some point pretty soon. When he, even when he starts his hand, he starts with 825K while Maria has like over 5 million chips, right? This is a free roll. The blinds move really quickly. You got to take your shots when you have a reasonable hand here. Once Ike puts in, puts in half his chips on the turn, not only is the story bad, the situation kind of demands that he doesn't fold when a club doesn't come and she shoves. Even though sometimes she's going to be beat, it's like, so what? Like, I need to get a double. And I think she should be more aware of that too, maybe. I don't know. In the moment, maybe that's hard to do, but at least in retrospect. There are so many different potential inflection points in this hand. Ike deciding to bet the turn at all. He could have easily checked this back. I think most players would have. Maria deciding to raise the turn. Ike deciding to call. Maria shoving the river. Ike calling the river. That's five straight decisions that could have gone in a different direction reasonably. What do you think is the sort of the best play of those decisions? What do you think is the biggest mistake of those decisions? I think we, we dislike Maria's shove on the river the most. We think she really should be giving up there. Uh, I think we like... Ike's call on the turn the best because it sort of sets up his play on the river where he's probably already decided he's calling the river even though he does tank and he doesn't appear super clear that he's actually calling once he's actually in that spot. But what do you guys think? Do you agree with this? Do you think we're just straight wrong? Do you think Maria should be going for it on the river after all? Let us know in the comments. We want to see what you have to say. And if you want to hear more of our thoughts, we got in depth on the flop even. We got in depth on everything because that's what we do on our podcast. It is the Breakdown Poker Podcast with the Poker Guys. You can get it anywhere you get podcasts. Highly recommended. It's a good good show. It's how we come up with all of our ideas on everything that we ever do. By the way, there's also a podcast every Monday, meaning there's twice the amount of hands on the podcast as the videos. Definitely check it out. Also check out our book. It's called How Can He Fold? There's a picture of it. Look how pretty. Look how wonderful. It's a good book. It's fun. It's conversational, yet analytical. Wouldn't you say, Jonathan? I would say it's all those things, and it's not also a bag of chips, but if it came with a bag of chips, it would actually be all those things in a bag of chips. Yeah, but it doesn't, and don't no. ask us for a bag of chips. We wouldn't do that. We'd eat the chips or, or, not, or not spend the money. <laughs>